I believe in a textured mashed potato. I do not believe in a perfectly smooth mashed potato. That is a puree. It's almost like a dip. It's not not a dip. It's a dip for your turkey, a dip for a green bean, a dip for a little stuffing. Dip it all. It's Everything gets dipped. Wow, mashed potatoes is a dip. We're gonna make mashed potatoes. To do that, we need a large pot. So one large pot, this is going to be, uh, I think this is a 10 quart, this might be just an eight quart. If you have a Dutch oven, you can use that. If you only have smaller pots, do this in batches. But the point being is we are going to cut and boil four pounds of potatoes. Mashed potatoes are also a great leftover and something people will be so happy to go home with. So don't be afraid of making a little bit extra. I find it really nice to use a mix of a creamy waxy potato, like a Yukon Gold and a floury sort of baking potato like a russet. And this sort of gives you like a fluffy, starchy texture and this gives you rich, creamy texture. And I think married together makes the perfect mashed potato. I'm gonna weigh out my potatoes to make sure that I've got two pounds of each. It's basically one to one. So if you're like, I'm making double or I'm making half, it's a pound and a pound or four pounds and four pounds or three pounds and three pounds, you get it. Another kind of fussy thing that I rarely do, peeling a potato. Here it is necessary, I think. If you are a person who uh, grew up with like mashed potato with the skins on and that is something that brings you comfort and joy, you should definitely feel free to leave the skin on. But for me, it kind of messes with the texture. You want every piece of potato that goes into this pot to be the same size. And that size should not be too small because if you dice up a potato tiny, sure it'll cook a lot faster, but that potato will also be full of water. So you do kind of want to keep these on the thicker, chunkier side. Talking like two inch thick pieces. So pieces like that. And in my personal experience, it is a little better to overcook slightly than it is to under. I guess if you overcook it, you'll have like waterlogged soggy mashed potatoes. So I don't want to stress anyone out, but you do have to nail it. They're all about the same size. Idaho's and Yukon Gold's living in harmony. You're cooking your potatoes in water that should be as salty as the water you cook your pasta in. Cooking them in the salted water is seasoning them from the inside out from the get-go. You're starting with something already seasoned. You're only covering them by about two inches. You don't need a ton of water. So I'm just gonna set that on high and once it comes to a boil, I'm gonna set a timer for about 30 minutes. Those potatoes will probably take 40 to 45 minutes to fully cook, but I'll show you what we're looking for in terms of how to test for doneness, what they should look like and all that. Can I see the paper? <laughs> Lines. This episode of Home Movies is brought to you by State Farm. I hope those people have car insurance. State Farm offers some surprisingly great rates on car insurance. And that's why today I'm going to offer you some surprisingly fantastic tips on how to host Thanksgiving. Ask people to bring ice because unless you have an ice, even if you have an ice maker, I feel like you're going to run out of ice. And that is something that when you need nothing else can replace it. Invest in a few folding chairs because I know that I only have six seats at this table, but having these folding chairs that slide to the back of my credenza, you can store in a closet, are so, so helpful for additional seats. A thing that you should be also having on hand are plenty of disposable containers. And these can be like plastic Tupperwares or like to-go style containers. You can order them on the internet from restaurant supply stores, but you wanna get the food out of your fridge. You want some leftovers, but you don't want all the leftovers. And sending people home with like a little pint of mashed potatoes is such a beautiful gift. So hopefully these tips provide a little coverage for you on the big day, just like State Farm provides coverage for you every day. Like a good neighbor that you're obviously gonna invite to your Thanksgiving, State Farm is there. Not literally, not literally your Thanksgiving, but you know, figuratively. Go to statefarm.com for a quote today. To avoid those like gummy, starchy, sticky mashed potatoes, you really wanna start with like a hot dairy mixture, whether that's milk and cream, half and half, or what I'm gonna do, which is heavy cream and buttermilk. Almost equal parts, not quite, a little bit heavier on the cream side because buttermilk is so lean. So in this pot, I'm gonna go ahead and add one and a half cups of heavy cream and then one cup of buttermilk. If you are using whole milk instead, that's fine. Keep the proportions the same. I'm gonna go ahead and season this. A little salt, lots of pepper. I think pepper and potato is a beautiful and very underrated combination. I don't want this to simmer. I just want it to be warmed through. I am gonna add some garlic. Again, this is very optional, but simmering garlic in dairy actually mellows out the garlic flavor. The garlic cloves don't need to be strained out or fished out. 
and they kind of just melt into the potato. You never really know that they're there. I'll start with three cloves because they're pretty large. And I'm just smashing them to like expose their inside. Cool. I'm gonna drain the potatoes, they're done. And here's what we're looking for. This just kind of fell apart because I stabbed it, but it's very, very tender. Huh. So hot. These are gonna drain, I'll give them a toss. We want them to be pretty dry before they go back in that pot. I will never ask you to buy a ricer or a potato masher because I myself don't own one. Um, I've had great luck mashing potatoes with a wooden spoon. Your potatoes should be cooked enough so that doing this breaks them up. We're still mashing potatoes. These are mashed potatoes. Do we have our cream mixture? This has just been sitting and simmering lightly. The garlic is in there, it's totally softened. I'm gonna turn this on low just to keep everything like warm-ish. And we're gonna add a stick of butter in here. As I mix and smash, the potatoes will continue to fall apart. They'll continue to thicken. If it's too starchy and doesn't have enough dairy in it, it's gonna be just like a mouthful of dry. And I want it to be saucy. I want it to be on the plate to like add moisture. I want my mashed potato to be chunky and creamy at the same time. I want it all. If done properly, even like the chunks of potato that are lumpy should still be like creamy and tender. It's not like you're biting into anything hard. Um, mashed potatoes, uh, people like to ask me, how long in advance can you make them? My opinion is that they're the best the day of, unless you're committed to the leftover and like the reheat. But making these days prior to then like put them in a pot, adding more dairy to like heat them back up is like kind of annoying. So I say do them the day of. Mm. Those are so good. I like texture in my mashed potatoes. I like a few lumps. These taste so good to me. You want some? Creamy bits surrounded by like tender bits of cooked potato. As long as it's well seasoned and full of dairy and lots of black pepper, I am extremely happy.